Hi there, friends. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us for another edition of our Genesee Health Plan Health Yes Facebook Talk Back. And this week we are talking about veterans. This is really a subject that we have not touched on before. Um, so we're excited to take your questions. And as always, if you don't necessarily feel comfortable leaving a comment, uh, you know, with your question, you can always private message the TV5 page and uh, we will answer those as well. Uh, I am joined today with Jim Milanowski, President and CEO of Genesee Health Plan. A lot of you folks probably know him. I said that he's an old pro. He's practically yep. a member of the TV5 yep. news team That's at right. this point. <laughs> and uh, also today, our special guest, Jacob Bennett. He's a Deputy District Director for U.S. Congressman Dan Kildee. So thank you both for being here. And in case you missed uh, the 9 o'clock segment with these uh, two gentlemen just a bit ago, we're going to recap a little bit about what we talked about. So describe the veteran population demographic in Michigan and maybe our region. In Michigan, we have around 670,000, uh, just kind of as a whole, uh, working with a lot of these veterans. Uh, they're probably some of the most humble people. Sometimes you almost have yeah. to, you know, pull teeth to get them to apply for the benefits that they've earned. You know, mm -hmm. it's a part of their part of their service is what uh, what they've earned. So it's just a tremendous group of people uh, that we always have to deal with. We love working with veterans. I know our office we have some great veteran caseworkers. Uh, one of them, 25 years working for the congressman, and she's also a veteran herself. Wow. She works on veteran cases. So we have an awesome team there with the congressman. You know, Jacob, uh, elaborate on that a little bit, too. Through working uh, with the congressman's office, you, I'm sure you've met a lot of wonderful veterans um, personally and gotten to know them. What are maybe some success stories that you know of or, or something you can share with folks? Um, I, I think every single staff member in our office has an awesome case that really sticks with them. Uh, I know the congressman itself, he's very passionate about veterans. His father was a Korean War veteran mm -hmm. and he recently passed away, but he was a tremendous, tremendous guy. And uh, uh, the case that really sticks out to me the most, there was one that it was probably one of the most frustrating cases. The gentleman was a Vietnam veteran. He should have been awarded the Navy Cross and he did not get it. He, he was in uh, the battle. He was able to assemble two different rifles into one that was actually working under fire. Mm -hmm. And his, uh, his fellow soldiers around him put him in for, for the Navy Cross, but it never happened. So years later, uh, his health started going down and uh, his friends started contacting our office saying, hey, this guy really deserved it, he should have received it. It took us over four years of watching it through the process, through the different levels of the Navy, to try to get it through the Commandant of the uh, Marine Corps. Mm -hmm. And finally, after four some years, they finally awarded the medal and they brought him wow. to Washington, D.C. to do that. So something like that, it's one of those ones is frustrating for staff members. When something like that, all four years of working really paid off, and that was really cool. Yeah. There are just tons of stories about helping veterans get lost benefits, right. you know, thousands of dollars of benefits they should have received years mm -hmm. ago, yep. and they finally get it because we were able to, Congressman's office was able to push and help get those. Yeah. Wonderful. That is a great story. Uh, you know, tell us a little bit about, you know, why is this important to Genesee Health Plan as well and the partnership there? Well, we, we see a lot of veterans as well. Uh, they come in and sometimes they just want to sign up for the health plan, uh, mm -hmm. even though they qualify for other benefits because, you know, it might be easier or less confusing. Healthcare, as we've talked about on these segments, is confusing and, and challenging. Mm -hmm. And so veterans have the same challenges yeah. of trying to access care, knowing what they're eligible for, where, and, and and, and so uh, they come to us and then we connect them to resources in the community. Uh, in Genesee County, we have a veteran services or a, um, division of the county that works with veterans. And in Saginaw, I know you can go directly to the VA or, mm -hmm. or others uh, places for eligibility and benefits. But mostly it's just figuring out what el people are eligible for and then get them to the right resources. And then we've talked about our senior dental and we've also expanded that to veterans. Mm -hmm. So there are some veterans who might qualify for medical, but not dental. And so we we can put them on our coverage uh, for dental. You know, where can people get more information about services for veterans? Either, you know, maybe for the Congressman's Office, Genesee Health Plan, or both? Absolutely. We, uh, the, the job of the Congressman, we're a conduit of communication between agencies, but we also have a lot of resources. We work with a lot of these different groups. We may not have all the answers, but we know who does have the answers. So uh, we can do referrals to different organizations. And another great place to start is the veteran service organizations. Mm -hmm. uh, whether it's, like I said, it's the American Legion, the VFW, AMVETS, Purple Order the Purple Heart. A lot of these organizations, they have uh, staff members who are certified by the VA to help veterans fill out applications. Okay. 
Uh, so that's, that'd be the great place to start. Like I said, if they don't know, call our office and we'll definitely be able to connect them to wherever they need to go. Because these applications could be really daunting. Sure. You, know, you can go online and, and, and look and you almost have to be a PhD to figure it's it all maneuver, out, yeah. you know? And mm -hmm. so it is better to go one-on-one -on -one right. and, and work with somebody who can help a veteran fill these forms, these uh, applications out. Right. Now, this is a side note, we are a day late. I'm the only one who knows these wacky holidays, but yesterday was National Hire a Veteran Day. Oh. So, you know, this is a very timely segment. Anyway, I couldn't let go <laughs> without talking about that. Good. Um, any advice, Jacob, for recently discharged veterans? Absolutely. Uh, I have a lot of friends that were in the military. A lot of them went off uh, for at 9-11. They, they joined the military. A lot of them are coming back now. Uh, a lot of the, the health conditions just through uh, you know, the service that they've done. Mm -hmm. And the biggest advice I would have to a lot of them when they're coming back is keep copies of everything. Yeah. Whether they're discharge documents or DD-214s, keep a copy, send a copy to the clerk's office. A lot of times the clerk's office will be able to safe keep their discharge documents. The other one is keep all their medical records, their 201 file or whatever, they, if they call it their uh, personnel file. Okay. Keep a copy of that because a lot of that stuff will be used when determining whether you have service-connected disabilities or what your eligibility for things are. So definitely keep a copy of that and apply early. Apply as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. The sooner you apply, the sooner benefits can go back to you if you are eligible for them. So do it, do it soon. Okay. And then, you know, my <coughs> push has always been preventative and, and so right. know what you what you qualify for mm -hmm. and and then where to access services right. and get preventative care before you get really sick or when you're in that crunch and you need services and then you're like you have to wait or you don't know where to go or it's good to have that preventative plan and also to have that relationship with the the doctor sure. that you have sure. so uh, Jenny asks, if veterans have questions about services they qualify for, who should they call for information? We, we sort of touched on this, but if you want to uh, go over it again, I'm sure that would be great for folks who are just joining us. Yes, like I said, definitely the veteran service organizations, the veteran service officer, one of the certified veteran service officers, the best place to go. If you do not know where you can find one, call our office, call the Congressman Kildee's office, and we're happy to point you in the right direction and get you connected. And then in Genesee County, there's Veteran Services Division of the county, mm -hmm. and so uh, we'll put that number up uh, later. And I know the VA uh, local he, here in Saginaw has an eligibility office that people can go either in person or call and ask questions as well. Sure. Victoria asks, what types of services and support are available through your office? I'm assuming uh, she's talking about the congressman's office. Yes. We, we can kind of a lot of things. A lot of people know the legislative side of the congressman. Uh, a lot of them do not know the casework side. That's a huge part of the congressman's office. We do a lot of support. Now, when the VSO or Veteran Service Organ Organization, they can fill out the application. But once it's submitted to the agency, we can follow it through the process to make sure that things aren't, aren't stalled in the process. There may be some missing paperwork. We can help let the veteran know. We're what they call a conduit of communication between federal agencies. So the agencies have to respond to us. Okay. It's not always a yes. It's not always yes, you're approved, but they will tell us what the answer is. Okay. So they call us with a question. We pass it on to the agency. The agency tells us, and we get that back to the constituent usually very quickly. They have to respond to us usually within a few days. Okay. And then at our office, we you mentioned hire a vet. We have three veterans on Wonderful. staff at the health plan, and one of them is somebody that we you could connect with, and he can help and assist walk you through some resources right. and so forth. Because he's just recently uh, been discharged and yeah. uh, and also he is in the reserves, and so he's got a real good familiarity of this process as well. Mm -hmm. so. Yep. And some of the other things that we can help out with is if you don't have your DD-214, we can request that through the okay. uh, Military Personnel Records Center. Uh, we've helped veterans get their replacement medals. If you've lost your medals, you can get one replacement copy for your lifetime, and we can help do that. Uh, we've helped out family members with, with headstones. And uh, just in your 50th anniversary of the Vietnam pins, those are now being available for the wow. veterans, so we can help get those for the veterans as well. Well, Michelle says, why do veterans have to apply? Aren't they automatically enrolled? 
Unfortunately, they're not. Right. Yeah, that's that's they mm -hmm. they have to come and ask for it. And that's when I was talking before. They're very humble people, and they have to tell them this is an earned benefit. Right. This isn't something that they're handing out. You, this is part of your compensation for going off for to service, war. Service, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And they might be eligible for benefits and a higher benefit level, and they don't even realize that. Yes. Mm -hmm. And in our state, it, we're one of the lowest ranked states in the nation in getting a veterans their benefits. Mm -hmm. So that's something that that's why we're. You ask why it's important to us that's important because we need to get the veterans their benefits that they deserve okay yeah Julia asks are there resources in the Genesee County that a veteran can take advantage of yes I know the, the great source you can go to is the Genesee County veteran service office there I know uh, Janine Thick over there and they do excellent work they have veteran service officers right in the county okay. building there that can direct them to what eligible uh, benefits they have and then there's also coming up uh, on August 1st, uh, Wednesday, August 1st, is a, a huge uh, yes. health care and veterans fair. So if somebody who's watching this or has a loved one and they are unsure of their benefits or where they can access health care, uh, I know that's going to be posted on uh, the Facebook page. But it, I think it'll be a real good source of information for somebody who's unclear or unsure. Right. That is Wednesday, August 1st from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Um, at the VA Flint community-based outpatient clinic and you need to bring your proof of military service if you have it driver's license or state ID and health insurance information yeah. and uh, yeah as Jim said veterans encourage to stop by and see if they're eligible for health care benefits and to learn more about the programs and services offered at uh, the area VA hospital so that's a wonderful thing mm -hmm. uh, Mark wants to know what is the presumptive illness benefit <clears throat> yes with the uh, Getting veteran disability, a lot of times they base your your benefits on a disability that you've incurred from military service. Now there's some some uh, illnesses and things people can get that they aren't sure it may or may not be from the service. But the VA, things like Agent Orange, if you have certain health yes. conditions, they presume that if you have this health conditions, it was because exposure to Agent Orange, and we're going to presume that it's military service connected. So we'll give you benefits. So that's what the presumptive is. Right. I know that Congressman Kildee, too, has been doing a lot with um, the Air Force bases and the PFAS, too. Yes. We've been reporting a lot on that recently, and mm -hmm. he's very, very active in getting uh, the folks what they deserve from that, too, and well, figuring even out the those, testing. And, absolutely. Yes. It's yeah. even people who've been at Camp Lejeune, and yep. there was a water issue, mm -hmm. and so it could be causing a medical condition now. Yeah. So kind of sounds familiar, but, uh, right. uh, you know, to Genesee County residents. But, uh, you know, so, mm -hmm. yeah, so there's a lot of benefit out there that people just might not even realize that they qualify for. Um, Gerald asks, are there groups or meetings regionally for veterans? Yes, there, there are a lot of groups and, and a lot of the groups have different focuses, different aspects. Uh, the best way is just to reach out either to our office or to the veteran service organization and ask them some of the different groups. A lot of them, you know, some of them deal with uh, recreational therapy. So if the people want to be able to go out and, uh, you know, go fishing or kayaking, some of the uh, therapeutic benefits of outdoor right. recreation, there are certain groups for that. Sure. So a lot of it depends on what you're looking for, but there are tons of groups out there. So reach out, like I said, either to the congressman's office or to a veteran service organization and they can point you in the right direction. Okay, wonderful. Kathy says, is there an income limit? On some benefits there are, but okay. that's something that you'd have to talk to a veteran service officer because they have a lot of, there are a lot of if, ands, or buts in, right. in those things in the application. So definitely, even if you think you might be over, apply anyway. Yeah, let them let them go through. You never know and go through that process and apply. Okay. And we do have an income limit on our <laughs> veterans dental, but again, I would be like, uh, Jay, call us and we can find out and walk you through that. Yeah. yeah. Caitlin's asks, uh, do all veterans qualify for the same benefits? No, every single veteran's different. Mm -hmm. They have different situations. They're different benefits based on the time of service, the battles they were in. It's all dependent on that person. So they have to go and check it out with, uh, with organizations to see which they qualify. But ask for everything. If you have any condition you think might be associated, but you don't know, put it on there and request it sure. anyway. All right. Pete asks, I need work done on my teeth. How do I know if I have coverage? Well, the biggest thing with that, like, it, like the other ones, is just to, to ask, to go through the application process through the VA hospitals and see what eligibility they have. Yeah, same, same thing with Dora. She wants to know, what do I qualify for? Yeah. Okay, John says, I'm a veteran living in Saginaw County. Where should I go for help? Saginaw County, the, uh, actually the Saginaw VA Hospital, Levy Lutz Hospital, has veteran service officer there on hand as well. So you can actually go to the hospital right. to help for filling out applications and things too. 
Um, Mark is asking a similar question. Are there support groups available for vets? And Jacob did just yes. answer a similar question, and he said that, yes, there are several. There are some that are very, very specific, um, even, like you said, recreational therapy, fishing, kayaking, uh, things like that. So uh, you can call Congressman uh, Dan Kildee's office for that, and they would probably be able to answer those questions for you. Mm -hmm. Veronica asks, is there somewhere I can go, where do veterans, or I, I can go, where do veterans go for mental health services? Mental health, that's something we haven't really talked a lot about. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yes, that, that is definitely something I know that's, that uh, Congressman is very passionate about. Uh, and my, myself, I've had a, uh, one of my good friends from high school, unfortunately took his life after he came back. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it's, it's, it's a big, big deal. It's a lot of the stuff that's been going on. So a lot of resources that they have uh, outside of veterans with some of these support groups that we can point you to as well. But also with, with the VA, a lot of it is going there and, and asking and applying. And there's a lot of help out there. A lot of people may not feel comfortable doing it, but like I said, uh, there are a lot of groups. If you're not comfortable with the VA, go to the VA for help. If you're not comfortable with them, there are other support groups that you can get connected with with the veteran service organizations. Well, and that is the thing too, and uh, you know, we've, we've talked to several veterans on our shows and doing stories, and, and a lot of them from the Vietnam era saying, we didn't have those resources then, mm -hmm. right, you know, right. and now they are available, so use them. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Go, if, you, if you need help, go ask for it, because the resources are available. And know what they are ahead of time, right. because again, sometimes these, you know, our mental health kind of happens upon us, mm -hmm. and we're under stress, and that's when we need to access services. And by then, it's like you're trying to find a phone number, and it's, it's important to know what those are ahead of time. Right. Yeah. This is a private Facebook message that says, where can veterans go if they're homeless? I want to help my brother, but I have limited resources. There, there are a lot of resources, especially a lot of the, the homeless shelters. They get dollars specifically for veterans. Mm -hmm. That's all they can use it for, uh, the Veteran Choice Program. They have different programs where the veterans only can access these funds to get rental housing, to get homeless shelters, things like that. So they reach out to the veteran service officers, and there's some toll-free numbers we can connect you with as well. If you are homeless, they can connect you to those resources because there are a lot of them out there. You just need to ask for them. Right. Yeah, I know there's, I don't know about locally, I um, used to live in northern Michigan. I know there's a Patriot Place in Gaylord that's a homeless shelter just mm -hmm. for veterans. But yeah, like there's a, there's a lot of uh, resources that you can uh, look into. Samantha says, where do I go for a VA home loan? Mm -hmm. And that, that's similar with the other benefits. A lot of the, that, that is just one of the many benefits, whether it's educational benefits, if you need help with those, veteran service officers, very much a one-stop shop for a lot right. of these benefits to see what you might be eligible for. And they can help you walk through that process. Okay. Um, David says, I just got out of the service. Where can I find a job? I know a lot of veterans looking for work when they come home. Yes. And that's another thing. There's a lot of uh, federal incentives for employers to hire veterans. Okay. A uh, great place to go would be to the Michigan Works office. They have veteran uh, resource counselors there that specifically help veterans in employment and training and things like that, getting them back into the workforce here in the United States. Okay, wonderful. Um, Diane asked, do veterans have to go to the Veterans Ann Arbor Hospital or Saginaw VA for services? So do, maybe do they have to go to a veterans hospital? That's a good question. There, we have some local, they call them CBOX, the community um, outreach, uh, some of the key clinics that they can go to if they have some, some minor things like a normal clinic can handle. Right. The VA typically directs which hospital they go to because some of the hospitals have different specialties, different doctors. So depending on what condition you have, the VA will assign you to a different, different uh, hospital. And they typically have transportation help as well mm -hmm. that can help get you from that nearest uh, CBOC or hospital to whatever VA hospital that can treat them. But the VA typically, uh, they'll determine which hospitals that they can go to. But like I said, if there's a long wait in certain circumstances, yes, they can go to an outside facility, but you have, typically have to get pre-approval from the VA. Okay. Yeah, there's a, it's called <laughs> Veterans, Veterans Choice. Choice. Yeah. And so uh, probably to ask one of these uh, offices about that, yeah. and you have to get prior authorized, but there could be some local places for care that they might be eligible for. Um, it's similar question, Taylor says, is there any after hours clinics that veterans can go to? Uh, they do have a 24 hour nurse line that veterans can call if they have some of the okay. questions. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of the VA hospitals do not have emergency rooms, right. but they do have, like they, pe veterans are able to go to other of the clinics. It's not always guaranteed that the VA will necessarily pay for them. That's what veterans need to, to realize when they go to some of these clinics right. and other hospitals that don't wait though. If it's an emergency, call 911, go anyway, and they'll work it out later. And if they have trouble with some of that stuff, feel free to give our office a call and we can, we can help them work through that process. 
All right. So thank you both uh, for joining for joining me today. We I think we covered a lot of ground here for mm -hmm. our veterans and their health care. Um, just to recap here, the phone number for Genesee Health Plan is 1-844-232-7740, or you can visit geneseehealthplan.org. And also, of course, veterans who need assistance can con contact Congressman Kildee's office at 810-238-8627. And as always, uh, with all of our segments here on Facebook on Thursdays, if you have questions and you want to leave them in the comment section, just because the video has ended and maybe you're watching a playback of it, we will get uh, to your questions, either us or Genesee Health Plan or, or maybe even Congressman Kildee's office today on our live feed. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a great rest of your day.